After four projects and four months, my shop is in some seriously bad shape. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Some of the things that I like to do in between my projects to clean and maintain the shop. Welcome to episode 28 of The Wood Whisperer. I'm your host, Mark Spagnolo, and now is the perfect time to get this shop back in order, just so that I can mess it up again next week. Now, my stepdad is usually the guy responsible for keeping The Wood Whisperer shop nice and clean, and he does an excellent job. Even though he cleaned up several times over the past few months, the shop is still a wreck. The finishing bench looks like a tornado hit it. I can't even see the top surface of my workbench, and sawdust and wood scraps are just lying everywhere. Now since we're in between major projects, it is the perfect time to clean up, organize, and do some light maintenance. So let's get to work. In between projects, one of the best things you can do is clean your table saw blade. A lot of people think that their blade is dull, and in fact it's actually just dirty. So there's, there's pitch and resin on there, and I've already taken the arbor nut off. Okay, and this is just the forest woodworker too. And mine definitely is in need of a cleaning, okay? So that's what we're gonna do next. But while this guy is getting cleaned, and I'll probably just put it on the shelf for later, I'm actually gonna put on a new blade. I've been very anxious to try this company out. Uh, this is the Tenru blade. It's the gold medal series. It's a sweet looking blade. All right, I actually talked to the folks at Tenru at the woodworking show in, uh, in uh, where was it, in Vegas? And I was really impressed with their product, and fortunately, they were able to send us a sample. Now, if you remember, if you saw that video, one of the things that guy did was he tapped it with a nickel to show how dead the sound is, that they uh, found a way to, to reduce that vibration. And if you really have reduced the vibration, you shouldn't get nearly as much of a, a tonal quality when you tap it with a piece of metal. So I was actually pretty interested in, um, in, in testing that out myself because... His had this little plastic ring around it, so I was like, well, of course it's gonna dampen the sound. It's got plastic around it, but I wanted to hear for myself. So this is the Tenru blade, okay? Now listen to the forest blade. Okay, that's pretty significant. So uh, other than the fact that, you know, one is good for making music and the other isn't, the, the fact that it, it hits that tone means that there's much more vibration in that blade than there is in this one. And also it's gonna be a quieter operating blade in your saw. So I'm gonna put the Tenru blade in now. And before I tighten this guy down, I like to spray a new blade with a, a dry film lubricant. This is Super Lube. I think I got this at Lowe's, okay? I usually just spin the blade around. Just make sure the teeth get a decent coating. It just helps for friction-free cuts. Now, this actually probably does contain a little bit of silicone, but uh, people say that that can interfere with finishing. I'm not too concerned about it because I never really go straight from the table saw to the finishing room. So, uh, one other quick thing, as I put the arbor nut on here, I want to show you how much I tighten my blades. This may not be right for everybody, but it works for me. I believe in it. Okay, and once I have it finger tight, put the wrench on the nut, put it in a forward position here, and I hold the blade with my fingers, and I tap the wrench. That's all you need to do to get your blade nice and tight. And then you don't have to wrestle this thing when you need to, to, uh, to loosen it later. Now we're gonna clean the forest blade, and there's a number of ways you can do this, and I would say the less caustic the material you use, the better. You don't really need to get nasty stuff on this. All right, so Rockler sells these great little kits. Um, it's a shallow bin, you know, so you could actually pour the liquid out when you need to, okay? And it comes with the pitch and resin remover that they also sell separately. Now, honestly, I've yet to find out exactly what's in this stuff, but it smells very citrusy. So it reminds me of one of those natural citrus uh, cleaners, but you can use things like Simple Green. Do not use oven cleaner or a degreaser because that stuff can actually um, weaken the bond of the, the carbide tips to the blade itself, and you don't want those things flying around your shop. Okay, so I empty the whole, the whole uh, container into there, and I actually just drop my blade in, the whole thing. Don't let it splash in your face, because that's bad. Swish it around a little bit, and make sure the blade's fully covered. Now I've got a couple router bits that are pretty dirty too, 
Right? So I'm going to throw those in there while I'm at it. Let them hang out. And I give that about 10 minutes to soak. Now it's been about 10 minutes, so our blade is ready to be brushed. Uh, I use a little acid brush like this. That's all it takes to clean that gook off of there. You don't really need to get much more aggressive than that. So see if you can get a nice tight shot of this. You see all the schmutz here? That's going to make a really, really, uh, it's going to make it seem like the blade is really dull when in fact it's really not that bad. So get the teeth. And you could use one of those uh, scotch bright pads for this if you want to. But I like the brush. It seems like it's, you know, it's a lot less aggressive. Okay, and I just go around. Even got some material here that's made a ring around the outside. That's bad news too. Okay, and I keep going around until the whole thing's clean. Make sure you get inside on the front face of the teeth as well. Now that the blade is cleaned off, just pull it out of the uh, pitch and resin remover and I dry it off. Just use a paper towel. Now sometimes I'll actually rinse it with water, depends on how I feel, but the key is to make sure you dry it thoroughly. And in fact, I typically use a blow dryer to make sure that those teeth have absolutely no moisture on them before I put it away. Okay, let that dry. I'll, I'll come back to that and dry it more later. Okay, now this pitch and resin remover is reusable and that's why this little container here is awesome with the pour spout on it. And I actually pour this material back into the bottle and I use it again later. And I think this bottle is probably about three, maybe four years old. I just keep reusing the same stuff. You lose a little bit each time, but you know, purchase this once and it lasts four years, that's not bad. Now I also like to make sure that all of my cast iron surfaces in the shop are nice and slick, rust free and ready to go for the next project. Now in Arizona, rust is not usually much of a problem, so maybe once a year I give them the full on rust treatment and I believe in the bandsaw tune-up episode I covered how you would treat a brand new cast iron surface and that's exactly what I would do for a yearly maintenance. I might use a little bit of sandpaper with, uh, with the WD-40 or something to clean off the rust but for routine maintenance like this, things like WD-40, I've got some white lithium grease here, you don't want to use these products. They're actually going to make the surface more wet, you know, and, and what's going to happen when you have a wet surface and sawdust it's just going to be a, a goopy mess, so you, you want to stay away from the wet stuff. What you do want to use are silicone-free waxes, polishes, things like that. So this is probably one of the best values uh, if you're looking for the cheapest way to do this. This is just uh, Minwax Paste Finishing Wax. You can use like a Johnson's Paste Wax. Okay, it's just a simple formulated wax. Stinky, you know, you might want to wear some uh, uh, breathing protection while you use this stuff. This is perfect. You can get a product, something like Top Coat. This is the Bostik, B-O-S-T-I-K is the name of the company. Top Coat's great, and man, is it convenient. You just spray it on the surface and then buff it out. Uh, it's great, but it's a little bit more expensive. And then, of course, good old Renaissance Wax, one of my favorite uh, waxes. It's a little bit more of an expensive wax, but man, this stuff lasts forever. So I try to use this as much as possible, but I'm getting low, so uh, I may wind up just using my... Uh, Minwax Paste Finishing Wax for the surface today. So we go, uh, we go Michael Jackson style with a single glove. <laughs> All right, just uh, ball up a paper towel, get a good amount of wax on there, <clears throat> and buff it, baby. Like so, get a nice coating. Wait a couple minutes. Well, you could wait a couple seconds or a couple minutes, whatever, and come back with a clean part of your paper towel and buff it. And you get a nice slick protected surface. Now also keep in mind, if you have a splitter, it's a great idea to wax that as well so that the wood, as it goes through, slides right by with no friction. You don't want to get caught on your splitter. I mean, if it's lined properly, you shouldn't anyway, but it's nice to have, <clears throat> nice to have a nice slick surface there. And most likely, after a big project, you're going to have a lot of scraps laying around, little tiny useless pieces. Unless you're a, a scroll sawyer, or uh, perhaps if you do a lot of inlay, you could slice these up into little inlay pieces. I've got plenty of that laying around, so I don't really need this extra scrap. 
I do one of two things. First of all, uh, if you're a big fan of barbecue, you got it made. These hardwood scraps are great for smoking, uh, you know, different types of meats. Stay away from the exotics. I got a lot of Wengi scraps and I'm not going to use those in my grill. Also stay away from your softwoods. The uh, resin content in those is a little bit too high and it can make for a really acrid smoke. So just stick with the standard hardwoods. I've got some alder, cherry, maple, uh, even some white oak. Those are going to be perfect for the grill. Now, no matter what I do, my putty knives always seem to get gummed up and they just get a bunch of crap stuck to them. If you've got some sort of a power sander, I like the oscillating spindle sander for this. You can clean these up in no time. Now, it's no secret that woodworkers make a lot of dust. Now, what the dust collector doesn't get with my Cyclone uh, usually winds up on the floor and things like hand planes and my miter saw is not connected. Uh, so I, t I still tend to get a lot of dust on the floor that needs to be picked up and my uh, trusty shop vac is what does that. Okay, this is a five and a half horsepower, 12 gallon shop vac brand shop vac. Works really good and I'm gonna show you what I do on the inside. Now, I made the mistake when I first got my shop vac of only relying on that inner pleated filter. Okay, this filter right here. I relied on that to catch the dust, and only that. And it worked great, it does catch the dust, but man, does it clog up fast. Every five minutes I'm outside knocking that thing just to uh, loosen all the dust from, uh, from the pleats. And I realized that, you know, everyone was telling me you gotta use a bag, use a bag, and in my head I couldn't wrap, I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that it would actually keep the airflow even better if you put a bag in there, but it's absolutely true. You need that two-stage filtration. Okay, so most of the, the dust gets caught in the bag, and the real fine stuff that doesn't get caught in the bag gets caught in my HEPA filter right here. And the great thing about it, you notice there's no dust. I mean, there's a little bit of fine dust, but nothing caked in there like there would be if I didn't have a bag. And this guy keeps full suction until this bag is completely full. The other thing is, I've gone through two motors because that dust gets through here and goes up into the motor. Now that I've had my bag, I've had the same unit for over a year with no problems, no bearing whistles or anything that I usually get that shows that this, uh, the motor is about to go. Uh, even got to one point where the motor started smoking on me. So use a bag and the filter and you're gonna make your life a whole lot easier. One thing that we struggle with a lot as woodworkers is how to keep the glue off of our clamps. It's inevitable that it's going to get there. You could always cover it up with wax paper or newspaper as you're doing your glue up, but I mean really, what a pain. Uh, so you're going to wind up with these little droplets along the edges. So I just grab my, uh, my nice clean putty knife and I rub it along the edge and scrape it off. And even try and get into the little grooves here, pop out as much of that glue as possible. Now, if you waxed your clamp before, it should be a lot easier to, uh, to pop that glue off. And once the bar is nice and clean, take a little bit of wax, Renaissance wax or furniture wax, and I wax the bar. Let's go ahead and wax the inside face of the clamp as well. Now, it's always a good idea to sharpen your plane blades and your chisels as much as possible. Uh, the sharper they are, the safer they are, and the better your work is going to be. But realistically, how often do we get a chance to do that? There's one thing that you should do that will lengthen the time in between those major resharpening weekends. And uh, that's basically grab your highest grit stone, whatever you happen to have. I'm going to use my 8,000 grit Shapton ceramic stone. Uh, I'll give you some links in the show notes so you can see what these guys look like, but they're a little pricey, but man, are they durable. Okay, spray it with a little bit of water. And I take all of my, usually my finest chisels. I've got some knock around chisels, but my, my Japanese chisels, I usually do this treatment too. All I need to do is just to touch it up basically is flatten the back again and just polish that up. And once I have the back polished, then I have to focus on the bevel. I mean, it's just like sharpening anything else, except for we're doing the very final step just to give us that really nice sharp edge again. So let's do the bevel. So as you can see, just taking, what, 20, 30 seconds per chisel, you can get yourself some really nice sharp edges and extend the time in between those really long uh, sharpening weekends. 
Now this is just a way for you to touch up the chisels. I will do a full show on chisel and plane sharpening in the future, so this isn't it, uh, but this is a good way to touch up your chisels in between. Now of course every couple of weeks we've got to empty out the dust collection bin. The cyclone dumps out into my metal garbage can. You can see down here I just used this bungee strap to hold the lid on nice and tight. Pop the lid off. Now, fortunately, I've emptied this out a number of times in the past month. There's not much in here. Let's dump this in the garbage can. Okay, and at this point, usually this is full, so it's a lot funnier, but I do what I like to call the dump and run. See, fortunately, it's very windy today. Now for the best part of shop cleanup day. It's the shop dust blowout. What I like to do is open up the back door, and I open up one of the big front doors, just enough so that my fan fits under it, and I turn on my high velocity fan. This is my little leaf blower, and fortunately we don't have leaves in Arizona, but I do have dust. So instead of vacuuming up every little last speck of dust in here, I just fire this guy up, turn the fan on, put on all my protection, and uh, blow the dust out of the shop. So it's a lot of fun, actually, so check it out. So that should give you some idea of what it takes to keep your shop in tip-top shape. I'd love to hear some of the things that you guys do to keep the shop running smoothly. So feel free to add a comment to the comments section of this post. And if you have any questions, you can always email me at mark at thewoodwhisperer.com. Now I still get frequent questions about what you can do to support the show. Fortunately, we have a number of ways you can do that. You can shop at the Wood Whisperer store for equipment and supplies. You could buy Wood Whisperer gear from the gear store, or you can simply send in a donation. And don't forget about our Festool giveaway. Get those challenge question answers to festool at thewoodwhisperer.com, and you could win your very own ETS-125 sander. So until next time, remember, a clean shop is a safe shop. Now between, <laughs> between, now we're gonna clean off the floor. We're gonna clean out the floor. Right. Actually, start up with my face. So, really extend the time in between those major resort resort. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter because I don't live in that direction.